Do we have free will? Today I'm going to talk about magic and its connection to free will. We're going to do a magic trick. Okay? Okay, okay. It's about mind reading. So, ooh, ooh. yes, yes, yes. I want you to think of a three-digit number. You got it? Uh, Tell me when you have it. It's okay. Oh, perfect. Um, now please, what I want you to do is to reverse the number. Okay, Just okay. Exactly. It's okay, it's okay. You got it? Amazing. And now, this is a bit complicated, but go with me. I want you to subtract, to do the big number minus the small number. Okay. Okay? You have a calculator on this yeah. old phone? Is it a three digit number as well? Yeah. Okay, I want you to reverse this one again. This is a really random number. Last two numbers, add them. Okay. okay, okay, good. And tell me when you have it. Okay. It's a three digit number? No. Four. Yeah. Four is okay. We got a new number, it is as random as could be. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if I told you that nothing is random? Look, I don't want to touch it. Inside this envelope, there is a note. Yeah. Open it up. Show, show, yeah, open it up. Show the camera. Show the camera, show the camera. Is Already that, is that, Oh, fuck! Yes! Oh, yes! Yes! yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, Leo. Um, yeah. You want to know how it's done? Yeah. I'm going to teach you exactly why it works, how it works, and most importantly, why are we amazed by such a simple mathematical trick. 1089. I don't know why this trick works. I have no idea, but it just does. It just magically works. It just, try it, it works. I have no idea about the mathematics behind it, but I do know that it just works. It has something to do about the number theory and about the number nine, I don't know exactly what it has to do with it, but I know that if you do it correctly, you do all these steps, uh, I'm gonna list them down below in the comment section, it always gets to 1089. Now that's not amazing. The amazing part is that we feel like we chose 1089. If I just show you a mathematical trick, if you take any number, you do this procedure, that procedure, and then you get 1089, that's a cool trick. It's not amazing because it's missing one basic element, free will. Now before I get into why I think this trick is so amazing, I wanna talk about assumptions, and I know I talk a lot about assumptions in my videos, cause that's what I think magic is, breaking assumptions. But before I get into that, I think the reason this trick is so amazing, and it is simple, it's a simple trick, you can learn it probably everywhere online, um, it's, it's published every magic magazine and every magic tutorial on YouTube. That's not the point. The point is that the amazement of the trick will be dependent on how embedded the assumption that we break is. I'll say it again in a different way. In every magic act, you break assumptions. So, for example, you learn that a card is a card when you're about, I don't know, six? when you start playing with cards. But you know that gravity works so that things are falling down practically from day one on planet Earth. So if I make a card change, that's amazing. But if I make something levitate, that is a miracle. So the assumption that we break in this 1089 trick is the assumption that we have free will. This is an assumption we have since day one. We know that we are responsible for our acts. And it's maybe one of the most important assumptions for our development. There is one belief that our brain would never let go. The belief that it has free will. So here are two of my favorite experiments explaining the importance of free will. The first one was done in the early 1950s and it's called the kitten experiment. They basically took two kittens attach them to each other in a mechanism where one of them can walk and the other one only experiences the walk of the other one. So, in other words, one of them has an impact on its surroundings and the other one is only being lit. 
The results are shocking. The one that was led and had no correlation between his own will and what he sees in his life was actually blind. He could see, but he could not connect it to his own will. So he was practically blind and it's not reversible. The second experiment I want to share with you was done in the 1980s by a guy called Benjamin Libet. Libet tried to prove that the process of choosing does not start with our soul and then to our brains and then to our action, but actually starts in our brains, only then we become aware of that choice that the brain made for us, and only then we physically apply it. What Libet did is he took people, put them next to a table with two buttons, one for the right hand, one for the left hand. And then what happened was amazing. He told the people to choose whatever button they want and to click it as soon as they choose it. The results of the scan were totally different. The results showed that the action originated in our brain way before we clicked the button. And you probably say, well, of course, it's got to start from the brain. It's not a matter of like milliseconds. In average, they had seven seconds between the initial brainwave and the clicking of the button. This is mind-blowing. This goes to show that the process is not selection process action, but it's actually selection, confabulation, and action. Yes, I said it. Confabulation. Confabulation. Such a cool word. There is a magic trick called confabulation. Confabulation is what our brain does in order to compensate for its lack of independence. Not everything we do in life depends on us. And the brain, as I said earlier, always wants to feel that he is the one in control. He is independent. He has free will. In simpler words, confabulation means that your brain will be willing to change all of its reality just in order to not let go of its own belief that's independent. Think about your own life. What part of your life do you believe is under your control, but in reality, it isn't? So I encourage you, go try it out, check it out on your friends, see how it works for you. And most important, comment down below. What do you think about these kind of videos, these psychological magic videos? I love doing them, but do you enjoy watching them? And do you have any specific psychological principles you'd like me to talk about? If so, what are they? So if you like this video, consider subscribing, and if you want to be notified of whenever I have a new video out, click that bell button next to it. It would really help me if you click the like button and share it with one of your friends who would maybe enjoy this kind of content. See you next time. Peace.